Hey traders, Akil Stokes here and welcome back to another episode of the Trading Coach Podcast. If you guys are new, I am a professional Forex trader, trading coach, real estate investor, entrepreneur, and a person that just likes spreading positivity across the world. In today's episode, we're going to talk about building positive habits. I'm going to share with you a story of a trader who really made the shift from, well, the shift in mindset and really got on the right track of becoming an independent, consistently profitable trader. It's going to be pretty cool. But before we get started, do me a favor, guys. Leave me a review. Leave me a rating. Subscribe wherever you are listening to this podcast at. And I hope you guys enjoy the show. Hey, 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 traders, what is going on? Akil Stokes here, and welcome back to another episode of the Trading Coach Podcast. Today, I have a pretty cool story that I'd like to share with you coming from one of the traders that I work with. But before we get into that, just in general, uh, I want to share with you a little bit of a a conversation that I had on Twitter. We were talking this morning, and uh, someone shot me a message saying, hey, Akil, you know, I, I... appreciate the uh, the thank you. I gave him a thank you for being a new follower. And it sparked a little bit of a conversation about giving back to your community. And I, I can't, I can't, um, I can't believe this guy actually responded. And one of the codes that I live by is that you need to believe and trust your community, right? A lot of, a lot of business owners out there, a lot of people trying to sell stuff, especially in the, the trading industry, which, which is a pretty, <laughs> a pretty bad and, and shameful one. A lot of people are just trying to sell you the product, meaning they come in and say, Hey, buy my product. If, if you don't like my product, F you, I'll go on to the next person. And you need to value the people that purchase your product just as much as the people that don't purchase your product. Because remember, whether someone purchases your product or not, it doesn't necessarily mean that they like or dislike you. Some people find a lot of value in what you do or what you have to offer. They're just not in the position to sign up uh, for it. And although they may give you or they may not give you money, right, to to uh, take part in whatever you're selling them, they're going to give you something that's a lot more valuable. They're going to give you their endorsement. And there's so many traders out there that have followed me throughout my journey for, I don't know how many years I've been doing it and have never purchased a single thing from me as far as a, an educational service or a training course or a piece of software or whatever it is. And uh, or But they're the first ones to retweet. They're the first ones to share, leave a nice comment to um, refer my services to someone else. And that's how you grow a business with a tribe that you want to have. And I'm talking about having good customers, not just or good followers, I should say, not just, you know, the amount of followers that you have on Twitter or Instagram or anything like that. But how engaged are those followers? And I'm, I'm blessed to have such an engaged community. Now, also, how it helps me out is it allows me to create content. It, it, it's awesome. I was writing on my whiteboard this morning um, as I'm uh, planning to do uh, different things with this podcast and trying to trying to schedule out how am I going to have time to, to be a, a trader, to be a trading coach, to do daily trading videos, to do YouTube videos, do podcast videos, to write articles. How am I going to have time to do all this? How, aren't I eventually going to run out of ideas? And thankfully, because we have such an engaged community that asks a lot of questions and uh, shares a lot of their their stories and their journey with each other, it's like an endless amount of ideas. I can easily go over to the Twitter, right, and find an idea or a topic that's going to help influence and encourage and motivate and, and help others as well. So that's the, the very long-winded way of me saying thank you. Thank you for being involved. Thank you for all the support that you bring me, um, that you bring our team at Tier 1 Trading. And keep it up because although it may not seem like much, your comments, your engagements, your retweets, that's allowing us to reach more and more traders, more and more people across the world and lend a helping hand to them as well. So I appreciate you guys playing your part. Now, here's what I want to talk about. I got a cool message today on Instagram, right? It was a, a trader that is working with us said, hey, Akil, me again, right? He had typed me a few messages before, sent me a few uh, cool quotes from a book he's reading. He said, I just want to share, share with you this trade I took. 
And as I've been holding this trade, I took this trade last week and I've been holding this trade for the past seven to eight days. I teach uh, either a day trading strategy, uh, well, the general rules of technical analysis, so you can use it where, whatever time frame you want. But um, most of the traders I work with are either day traders or, or shorter term swing traders, meaning that they're looking to be in and out of a position within a matter of days, one to two days max. So to be involved in a trade for seven to eight days, that's a that's a pretty long one. And, and for you guys that are familiar with the 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 hardships of trading psychology, that's certainly a mental test. So he said, Akil, I've been holding this trade for the past seven to eight days, almost got stopped out three times, very, very close, right? And each and every time that I almost got stopped out, I was so close, right? So close to the point of manually getting out. And that's the fear, right? I believe that once you're involved in the trade, there are only two things that should get you out of the trade. Your stop loss, your protective stop. So the place where you say, okay, well, I know I'm wrong. Take me out or your targets, right? The place where you say, Hey, the market proved that I was right. Get me out for, uh, for money. Anything else is, is considered making a trading mistake. Meaning if you take targets early because of, uh, you know, fear that that price may not make it down to your original targets or you stop yourself out because, you know, in this case, you're saying, "Ooh, the market almost got me twice. I'm just going to stop myself out for a little bit less of a loss. That way I can save some pips because the market's probably going to rally up and stop me out anyway. Right. It's it's fear. It's whatever excuse we need to um, exit the trade. There's, there's a whole bunch of psychological errors that people make, but these are the ones that come to mind when thinking about this trader's story. So he said, I was so close to manually getting out, but I remember a trade that you took on the dollar yen last week. And the trade that he's referring to is I'm actually still in this trade at the time of recording this, but, um, it was a trade that I took. Uh, we've been eyeing up a trade for three weeks. And I got involved and I hit target ones after, uh, a very rough go at things. And, uh, you know, I'm at the point right now where I don't really make any psychological errors in my trading. I've been through enough bad stuff to kind of become numb to it. But it was one of those trades that went 100 pips in my favor, 120 pips in my favor, and then went back up to break even. And then came 100 pips in my favor again, and then took me to negative 50. And then finally, after dancing around for about a week in the market, finally slammed down to hit target ones for, I think, about almost 200 pips. Um, and as of right now, it's right around, uh, really the, the second position that I'm holding is right around the break even point. So this has just been a, uh, it's been a difficult trade, but we, we did make some money out of it. But this was a trade that I walked, um, that I, I showed in advance to our, our tier one trading members. And I also walked them through doing a nice little video on the psychological battles that one will face in trading and, and gave some tips on how you can handle it. So that's what this trader is referring to. And he says, I remember that video of the, uh, the trade you took that, uh, last week or whatnot. Um, and you covered a, a very similar situation that I am in giving a lesson on psychology and, and how, uh, how people got out early. And what happened was after that trade had completed, I asked our trading group, I said, okay, how many of you guys stuck with the trade? And there was a handful of people that were like, yeah, I did it. I did it. I'm excited about it. Patience pays literally. But then, right, there was another group that was like, ah, you know what, man? I exited early. Come on, Akil. It was up 120 pips and then it, it went back to break even. And once it got 50 pips up again, I just, I just took it out because 50 pips, that's more than zero pips. And I just wanted to make some money. And now I'm upset because it went on the run to rally 200 pips down. And now I left 150 pips on the table and we made a good, again, a good lesson out of that. But he was saying that, um, what he told himself after seeing that video, after hearing that lesson, he says, what would Akil do? He said, I asked myself, Akil wouldn't have got out of this trade, would he? Always remember that it's better to hold, meaning stick to your plan, hold on to the position uh, as far as you're supposed to, hold and get stopped out than finding out that you would, uh, that finding out that it would have gone in your direction but you didn't have a chance to get involved because you sabotage yourself. So this trader is still in the trade. At the end, of, he says, uh, it went on for a little bit. He says, I'm happy to say that I'm still in the trade. It's trading in the negative, but I'm going to hold it until I win or lose. 
I just want to share that with you. Thanks again for being a great coach. All this other stuff about how how uh, awesome I am. I am pretty awesome, aren't I? But the takeaway from that, the, the most valuable part that I saw was that ending statement where he says, look, I'm in the negative right now, but I don't care. I am going to hold on to this trade, whether it wins or loses. And I responded to him. I said, that is that is excellent. That is excellent to hear because that's the mindset that you want to have. It doesn't matter whether that trade ends up winning or ends up losing, right? You know what it takes, process over outcome, right? The process of following your plan is more important than the outcome of the individual trade. Why? Well, because the outcome of this individual trade, if this trader were to take, right, targets earlier or or stop themselves out early and, and save a little bit of pippage that way, it would be a, a win, right? It would be beneficial to them at this moment, but it would also be destructive down the line. And they're most likely to have a shortened trading career because, well, they made this uh, quote unquote mistake, but it actually helped them. So next time that they're in a situation where they kind of have the same dilemma, the first thing that they think is, well, last time I did this and it saved me some money. So why shouldn't I do it again? And it starts that cycle of making bad habits. When you're making bad habits, you're getting away from your trading plan. When you're getting away from your trading plan, your trading plan is basically your rule book on how to make money, right? When you, when you deviate from that, it's only a matter of time before the market eats you alive. However, for the trader that sticks to their guns, that fights through the pain, the urge, the desire, to do all of the emotional things that we like to do. For that trader, that trader that has the mental toughness, the willpower to make it through, yes, this individual trade at this very moment may end up being a loser. But the lesson that they will learn, right, is going to be much more beneficial in the long run because they're starting to build positive habits. They're building good habits. And it may take a while, right? It, you, you, it, it may not be this trade. It may not be the next trade, but down the line, they're going to start shifting that mindset to the process being more important than the outcome, which means they're going to shift their mindset to a good trade is not a winning trade. Rather, a good trade is a trade where I follow my plan. A bad trade is not a losing trade. A bad trade is one where I don't follow my plan, right? That's the mindset we want to have. We can have good trades that lose. We can have bad trades that win, right? We got to eliminate, take the ax, right? Chop, right? Chop that association down. Good with process, bad with process, not with outcome. And when you get in the habit of doing the right process, right? Trusting and executing that trading plan that you worked oh so hard on. And for you guys that have done back testing, you, oh, hours, weeks, months, sleepless nights. I know my trading buddy, Jason Greystone has got pictures of him falling asleep at his keyboard, drooling, right? On his keyboard. I had another trader shoot me a message showing me, um, it was a picture message showing me how they broke, broke the right arrow key because they were scrolling through so many charts, one candlestick at a time, right? All of that work. I know my, my fingers always get like cramped up in this weird carpal tunnel type position. All of that work, all of that dedication, all of that effort, all of that time that we put into building something that is supposed to be our blueprint to success, our blueprint to creating profit and creating our perfect life in the market. All of the time that we spent into doing that means nothing if we can't execute it. So by making that shift to focusing on the process, we're able to execute that trading plan on a day in and day out basis. And that's what we need to do if we want to become consistently profitable traders over time. So super cool stuff right there. I absolutely love hearing success stories from traders and really seeing them make a shift in mindset that I know is going to help them become an independent, consistently profitable trader. As always, thank you guys for enjoying the show. Do me a big favor, subscribe, rate, and review. It is a massive help to myself and a massive help to growing this podcast. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Until then, plan your trade, trade your plan, 
You guys have a great day. Hey guys, Akil here. First and foremost, big thank you for all of the support that has been shown. You guys have done an amazing job leaving great comments on different podcasting sites, sharing this all over social media, and just keep it going. Let's keep the momentum going so we can turn this into the biggest and best trading podcast out there. I love it. Also, if you didn't see it today, I posted a YouTube video sharing a link for some free training, a free workshop I did called The Process of Trading, and I want to share that with you guys. However, it's only going to be up for a limited time, so make sure you check it out as soon as possible. And when you do, make sure you let me know what you think. Make sure you share it with a trading buddy of yours. Don't hog the knowledge to yourself. Let the world know about it. That way we can reach more and more traders and hopefully change this mindset that the internet has created about what trading is perceived to be and we can let people know what trading actually is. So keep doing that, keep supporting, and I'll see you guys next time.